This is my review of the Sony A105 Walkman. Uh, I believe this is their first Walkman that's powered by Android. Um, I'm going to make this as quick as I can. Uh, basically, um, there's some really great things about this and some really not very good things at all. So I'm going to show just a, um, a couple of the basic things about the hardware first. Uh, on the side we have uh, transport controls. So we've got uh, volume and then there is a uh, fast forward, rewind, and a play pause button right there. And on the bottom there is a USB-C port, a uh, spot uh, where my thumb is to put in the SD card. Um, there's a, a lanyard uh, uh, bar in there so you can attach a, a little lanyard and then there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, there isn't anything on this side um, or on the top and the back just says Walkman and it, it appears to be a nice metal uh, case and, and I'm really pleased with the build quality. Um, on top of this I have a glass screen protector which isn't applied perfectly so if you see any weird things about the screen that's probably what's causing that. Um, on the inside of this uh, it's a four core ARM Cortex A53 um, and as far as I can tell it's basically the same uh, chip uh, that powers the Raspberry Pi B Plus series which um, the the problem with that is the Raspberry Pi B Plus retails for about $30 and and this this unit costs about $350 and so Sony went really cheap with that processor. Um, there's four gigabytes of RAM and uh, the worst thing overall is that there's only 16 gigabytes of storage and uh, if you take a look, uh, I downloaded the Google Files app, if you take a look at the Android install, it takes up 8 of the 16 gigabytes. And then um, I had a software update uh, within a day or so of uh, powering it on for the first time, and that took 2 gigabytes, which meant I had to delete most of the apps I had downloaded. So that was really frustrating. Um, the screen is 3.61 inches from corner to corner and it is 720 by 1280 uh, resolution so basically it's 720p um, it has somewhere in the range of 360 to 406 dpi and i'm not sure what the correct number is because that's what was provided by sony inside there is a 1285 milliamp battery and um, that is approximately one third of the size of a normal smartphone battery and so um, that's really very, very small. Um, for comparison, um, this is a, a battery that's used in um, uh, Sony's popular uh, uh, cameras. And this is the NP-BX1 uh, battery. And this is a 1240 milliamp battery. So it's almost the same size as what's inside here. It's actually just a little bit smaller. And if Sony had actually used this thing, uh, it would have been awesome because you could have ejected this and had backup ones. And uh, these retail only for about 40 bucks. So it would have been awesome if Sony had included that. There's no camera on this. There's no fingerprint sensor. Um, I believe it has Wi-Fi 5. So it, it does recognize 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and 5 gigahertz. Um, there's no speaker on the unit, so if you play videos or music or anything, you can't hear it. Um, but there is a microphone present, so if you want to use the Google Speech to text, that works, which is awesome because the it has the world's smallest keyboard. So um, when you open this up, one of the things you'll notice is it's a pretty stock Android experience. And um, what that means is Google uh, requires all manufacturers to include their standard apps and that's really frustrating and that's why this is an 8 gigabyte install so there's maps there's mail there's uh, YouTube Drive uh, a whole bunch of apps in here and uh, in particular the maps probably would never use that on this thing and it takes up a, a ton of storage for a device that only has 16 gigabytes um, I installed just a handful of apps, so I've added uh, Audible uh, for eBooks, um, Dashlane, which uh, the reason I have that it's a password manager, but the main reason I have it is because uh, you can use a VPN with it, and a lot of networks, Wi-Fi networks, they block 
internet radio. So I use that to help get past that. Then uh, there's Calm, and that's like a meditation audio app. Calm Radio, which is just a radio app, but it kind of focuses more on like nature noises, that kind of stuff. Um, I added this headphone app from Sony, and that's so I can use my Sony wireless headphones. Pocket Cast, which I use to download a podcast. Um, uh, Kobos, uh, I think maybe that's how you say it. It's a uh, it's a competitor to Tidal and uh, to Spotify, so it's high resolution audio. And then Sirius XM, so you can stream Sirius XM uh, music via the app. Uh, the last one I added was uh, the Files app, and that helps you move files back and forth between the internal storage and the SD card. Pre-installed, um, there is the Sony Walkman app, and if you've ever used a Sony Walkman player before, it, this is the exact same thing, but it's it's basically uh, an Android app instead of just a a pre-built uh, uh, operating system that you, you can't add or remove things to. Uh, the next one is there is an equalizer and um, that only works with um, wired headphones so it doesn't work with Bluetooth. Then there's the Play Store and Chrome. There was another app on here which I think is still installed but I have it hidden um, because it only works with one specific pair of headphones. It's a it's a it's a noise canceling here it is it's a noise canceling app and I'm not sure why they included it because that app is only available in Japan um, so the problem with this uh, is is mostly that Sony went really cheap with it so the unit costs three hundred fifty dollars and it's got a, a great awesome physical build quality I really like the screen I like the buttons that's great but um, the processor is super slow I ran some some benchmarks on this thing and it scored in the in the first percentile uh the last uh percentile of all android devices which means 99 percent of all other android devices are faster than this um because of the price of this um sony easily could have put in a snapdragon 632 or 675 which would have made this tons faster um, the four gigabytes of RAM I think is probably fine. Uh, the storage they should have gone with 32 gigabytes instead of 16. Um, you're immediately going to notice that you're going to have to move data back and forth between the card and the apps a lot, and that's just not very well supported at all. Um, the other thing is again, if they had used a, a changeable battery, um, that would have made this tons better. I'm finding with uh, Wi-Fi on and uh, Bluetooth. I'm getting about four hours of battery life, and that's pretty sad. Um, but other than that, um, the the basics, it works really pretty well, and the screen quality is very nice. Um, it's high definition. Um, you're not going to see any any pixels or anything. Uh, sometimes it, it, it doesn't have the best blacks, but, I mean, you know, only a few OLED devices have that. But um, it, it, it's okay as far as launching apps. It's a little slow. And doing software updates, it's a little slow. And that's because of the processor. But because Google has optimized Android so much, it still works pretty well. So would I recommend it? Maybe. I mean, I wanted a device that's small, easy for me to use while I'm moving around, using the treadmill, that kind of stuff, cooking, cleaning. Um, and I tend to break things, and so because it's a lot smaller, it's a lot harder to drop. And I love the, the transport buttons, so even though you can get those on headphones, it's really kind of awkward to use those because there's no physical buttons. Um, and I do like that it has the external storage, so I've got my in, almost my entire audiobook collection on there, and there's hundreds of books, and that's awesome. You can put high definition audio. Uh, so your files that you're either you have uh, locally that you've that you've saved or that you stream from uh, high resolution sources like Tidal or Kobos or um, there's a handful of other ones uh, Deezer Amazon does it now too that's really great and so uh, I, I think kind of the biggest issue is if this were maybe 200 bucks or 250 I'd say you know what don't question it at all but I would say it's probably at least $100, maybe $150 overpriced. And uh, Sony um, really should rectify that 
as soon as really they can because it's 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 really kind of a bummer because this is a device that really could be a rock star iPod touch competitor if they would fix the specs and tweak the pricing just a smidge to, to make it that much better. I hope this review was useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, have a good day.